Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. Hi, it's Emmy. Welcome back. Today I'm partnering with Wix, a web building site that I use to build myself a beautiful website that I'm super excited about. Wix is great for both businesses big and small. Whatever you need, Wix can accommodate it for you. If you're one of the first 100 people to click the link down below, you can receive 10% off the premium unlimited plan. Big thanks Wix for sponsoring this video and allowing me to make better content for you guys. So today I'm going to be tackling the mirror glaze cake. Ever since I saw this cake, I knew I wanted to make it. At the time when this first came out, it was all a mystery and stuff, but two years later, now the code has been broken. There are lots of recipes and videos out there. I will put the links down below in the description to all the videos and blogs that I used for reference. Now, if you're not familiar with the mirror glaze cake, it is a gorgeous dessert, usually made of a cake made with frozen mousse with this gorgeous, shiny, colorful glaze on top that is so reflective, you can see your own reflection, hence the name mirror glaze. So two years ago, this was made popular by a pastry chef in Russia, but I believe the techniques are rooted in French baking. So today I'm actually going to do a little simplified take. I'm actually going to use a cake rather than doing the mousse frozen cake. If you want to see that, do chime in the comments and I'll see if I can tackle that one. I've been researching this for quite a while, so I hope it turns out like jiggly cake, right? Alrighty, so let's go ahead and get started. I already baked my cake according to package directions, mixed it up with some oil, some water, some eggs. So after mixing up the batter, I divided the batter evenly between the two six inch pans. This worked out to be about a cup and a third of batter in each pan. Smooth that out a bit and then bake it in a 350 degree oven and I baked mine for about 24 minutes. You'll know when the cake is done when you stick a toothpick in it and it comes out clean and the cake begins to pull away from the sides. So after the cakes are done baking, we're gonna take them out of the oven and allow them to cool in their pans for about 10 minutes before taking them out of the pans and allowing them to cool on a rack. So now we're going to make the buttercream frosting and not surprisingly, it contains a lot of butter. Now I've got four sticks that I've let sit at room temperature so they're nice and soft. We don't want lumpy cream. So my cakes are actually in the freezer. I want them nice and cold. They'll be easier to cut and easier to frost that way. All right, let's make our buttercream. So, in the stand mixer, oh! four sticks of butter into the mixer. Last stick of butter. I'm gonna give this a preliminary mix. And then we're gonna add four cups of powdered sugar. Now this can be a little bit messy, so make sure you start your mixer on low. Next, we're going to add one teaspoon of vanilla, one tablespoon of cream. Oop. So we're going to add more or less cream depending on the consistency. Ugh, looks good. Alrighty, so here are my two cakes right out of the freezer. They're nice and cold. Now I'm going to take my serrated knife and chop off the top. Ready? Here we go. Keep your knife parallel. Do, 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 do. Bonk. Turn it upside down, make sure it's nice and flat. It is. Now we're gonna do the same thing right in the middle. Boink. Two cakes. So one of my favorite TV show characters ever was MacGyver. Now Mac could hack and make something out of absolutely nothing and it was wonderful and he drove a Jeep and he had a wicked mullet and he wore a bomber jacket. I mean, what's not to love? At any rate, my favorite thing about MacGyver was his ability to make something out of nothing and to make do. So I am not a professional baker, but I like to make do. So yeah, this thing, <laughs> This is called a Lazy Susan, i.e. it's a turntable, and it's way too big. It is not the professional type of, you know, cake frosting turntable, but it's what I've got and I think it will work. So when I was watching a lot of these professional cake frosting videos, a lot of them had this kind of special spatula that they used to smooth it all out. I don't have one, but I do have this, and this is a dough or bench scraper, and I think this will work perfectly. It's not quite as tall, but for my situation, I think it's gonna work just fine. So we cut off the top, and we're gonna put that on the bottom. Now we're gonna take a little bit of our buttercream, put it right in the middle. That's actually not a little bit, that's a lot. So I'm gonna spin this a bit to get this to distribute. Now we're gonna put the top back on. Doink. 
So I'm gonna do the crumb coat, which is just the first coating of buttercream. Put a big dollop on top. Spread it down. And on the sides. While spinning the turntable, smooth out the frosting. Oh, it's working. Got a hole? Patch it. We're gonna do the same thing with the top. And gently apply pressure and spin. So now it's bulging on the sides again, and now we just clean it up again by doing this. All right, so crumb coat is finished. We're gonna place this back into the freezer and allow it to harden before we put our finishing coat of buttercream. So while my crumb coat is setting in the freezer, let me tell you a little bit more about Wix. So Wix is a free website builder that gives you options, whether you're a small business or a large business, if you need the e-commerce site, a place to display your work, or a place to put your menus, Wix gives you options. So Wix does all the heavy lifting, including reliable hosting, keeping your site safe and secure. Be sure to be one of the first 100 people to click the link down below to receive 10% off a premium unlimited plan. Thanks, Wix. All right, let's go grab our cake out of the freezer and do our second coat. All right, so here's the cake with the crumb coat. Now it's nice and hard. I'm gonna put another coat of buttercream. So now that this has been frozen, all those crumbs down below should be stuck in the buttercream and won't mar our finish. Although it's not that important in the sense that this is gonna be coated with a glaze. Bench scraper, place it perpendicularly, get our sides clean. Why this touch? All right, into the freezer. Next, we're gonna prepare our glaze. Here I have 19 grams of plain unflavored gelatin and 150 grams of water. I'm gonna pour some of that into this cup. And on top of that, we're going to add our gelatin. Stir that around a bit, and we want the gelatin to absorb this water. This is called blooming. We're gonna set this aside and allow it to soak up all the water. In a saucepan, we're gonna add the remaining water, condensed milk, this is 200 grams, 300 grams of sugar, lots of sugar, teaspoon of vanilla as well. I got the recipe for this glaze from Chef Iso. I will put the link down below. Okay, this comes to the simmer pretty quickly. Make sure you keep an eye on it or it will boil over. Now we're gonna add our gelatin. Boink. The gelatin will make this set. Now we take our 300 grams of white chocolate chips. We're going to strain the milk mixture. And the reason why we do that is to do that to catch any gelatin lumps. I'm just gonna cover that and allow that to sit for a couple minutes. A lot of people use immersion blenders, but when I went to Target, they didn't have any. What? Blender! Pour this goop in there. Puree. Very thick. Wowzers. So we're supposed to pour this at 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 33 degrees centigrade. While we're waiting for it to cool, this is a good time to mix the colors. I'm gonna do one pink, one teal. I'm actually gonna add a little bit of white to all of them to kind of opaque them up a little bit. Wow, that is so bright. So here's my cake straight out of the freezer. I've got a tray here with an upturned mason jar. I'm gonna use that as my stand. I'm gonna knock this edge off around the cake because if it's too sharp, it will actually cut through the glaze. So I'll use my finger, kind of roll that down. All right, I think we're ready to glaze. Gah! All right, so I'm gonna pour my white first, go around the perimeter first, and then I'm gonna add my pink and teal after. Here we go. glaze is very thick. It seems thicker than what I've seen in the other videos. <laughs> oh, it's not really mirroring so nicely down the sides of my cake as I wanted. This doesn't look right, guys. 
This is very viscous. It's almost like marshmallow. It's not flowing very nicely. Hmm. <laughs> This is not working. <laughs> and it's not smooth, it's full of bubbles. The socks, that's not gonna work. We're just gonna have to throw this all away and start all over again. <sighs> Cut. Hi, I'm back. I'm gonna do this again. Thankfully, I have one more cake in the freezer. I'm using a different recipe for the glaze. It's from Chell Sweets. I'll put her link down below. Fingers crossed that this works. All right in a saucepan, one cup of water, one half cups of sugar. Incidentally, that's twice as much water as the first recipe I used. I think that's gonna make a big difference. Same amount of condensed milk, about two thirds of a cup. I'm gonna bring that to a simmer. Two packets of Jell-O and a quarter cup of water. That was combined, turn this off. Two cups of white chocolate chips. And at this point, many recipes call for using an immersion blender, but not this one. It just says to combine it until everything melts. I'm gonna strain it through the strainer. To match my mood, I'm gonna go ahead and make a hot pink mirror glaze cake. I'm gonna do one that's slightly darker and a white one as well, and see if we can get some kind of marbling action. So into all these bowls, I'm gonna add white, even in the pink ones. That'll make it a little bit more opaque. Pretty pink. This one very pink, and I'll leave that one white. Ooh. Oh, still pretty hot, 103. <laughs> Here is my other cake, and again, I'm going to go around the edge, kind of around down the edge here so it's not too sharp. There's the second coating of buttercream, crumbs included. So for round two, I'm gonna do a slightly different technique. I'm gonna take my measuring cup. I'm going to pour the base color in there first. My lighter pink some white, just a bit. Give that a little bit of a swizzle. Here we go, happy mirror glaze. Oh yes, that's what I want. I'm not getting much of that white swirl in there, so I'm gonna add a little bit of white on top, just like that. Ah, oh, it's so satisfying. Look at that, it's so beautiful! Yeah! I'm so excited, it worked, it worked, it worked, it worked, it worked! It's Barbie mirror glaze. <laughs> it looks beautiful. This is, thank you, Chell Sweets. Yes. This is exactly what I wanted. Look at this. Triumphant. Stunning, I say, stunning. Down below, we're gonna just trim these little bits off. Alrighty, so here it is, finally, the mirror glaze cake. And after a failure, triumph is all the sweeter. It looks beautiful, so excited. Got some nice marbling here. It coated everything, it flowed over. I had the nice little satisfaction of seeing the marble effect happen. Here we go, knife sharp, here we go. Oh yes, that is satisfying to cut. Oh, that's hot, that was totally hot. I'm gonna clean off my knife. This cake is now frozen, so it just cuts beautifully. I'm sure I have frosting and glaze everywhere, but it is time to eat this thing. 
I love how this turned out. The chocolate, the white frosting, and the pink on the outside. A cake I think Barbie would approve of. So stinking cute. All right, let's give this a taste. Oh, it slices beautifully. Hit the Lucky Mouse. Mm. Tastes good too. It's that buttercream frosting that really makes it. The cake tastes like a cake box mix, pretty moist, chocolatey. The buttercream is really what makes it for me. Rich, sweet, vanilla. -ed. The glaze while packing a visual punch doesn't really add too much in terms of flavor. It has some white chocolate and some condensed milk, but it's so thin, it's not really noticeable. It's just really beautiful. <laughs> mm. And that is some well-deserved cake. Yum. Big thanks to Chell Sweets for posting this recipe, one that actually works. Big thanks to Wix for sponsoring this video. Be sure to check out the link down below and click on it to be one of the first 100 people to sign up and you'll get 10% off a premium plan. And thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you guys learned something. Share this video with your friends. It really helps me out. Follow me on social media to see what videos are coming up next. Subscribe, like, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodoo, take care. Bye. <laughs>